Hello and welcome to this video on how to combine AWS WAF and Tableau Server. My name is Katie Peace and I'm a consultant at the Information Lab London. So why choose WAF? If you need to have your Tableau Server open to the internet for any reason, such as embedding, then it's a good idea to protect it. WAF can inspect web requests to application load balances, so it can be used to help protect a Tableau Server that sits behind one. Please note, for the purposes of this video, we'll assume that you already have a Tableau server that sits behind an application load balancer. We won't be going through how to set one up. AWS WAF is a web application firewall that helps protect applications from a variety of common web exploits, including SQL injection, cross-site scripting, distributed denial of service, or DDoS, bad bots, and scrapers. AWS offer a WAF security automation solution that uses AWS CloudFormation and can get you up and running in about 15 minutes. In fact, when I've been running it, I found it to be even faster than that at about five minutes. This script can be set up to use some pre-configured rules designed to filter common web-based attacks. These rules can require list optimization to stop AWS WAF from blocking legitimate web requests made between Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server. Please note that AWS WAF is a charge service. Okay, so let's get started and navigate over to WAF Security Automations and run the CloudFormation script. So I've got here my AWS WAF Security Automations page. Uh, you can see that the estimated deployment time for this CloudFormation script is 15 minutes. As I said, I've been normally, uh, when I've run this, I've been getting about five minutes or so. I'm going to hit launch in the AWS console. You'll see that it automatically launches in North Virginia. I'm going to change this to London. And I'm going to hit next. In terms of stack name, I'm just going to leave that as the uh, the suggested name. I'm not going to change that, but of course you might want to. I don't want to activate AWS Managed Rules Protection, so I'm going to leave that as no. I would like protection against SQL injection attacks and cross-site scripting, so I'm going to leave these as yes. I'm going to leave the HTTP flood protection as yes, AWS WAF rate-based rule. I'm going to change the activate scan and probe protection to no, as for the purposes of this exercise, I don't want to use it. I am going to leave the reputationless protection and bad bot protection as is. And I'm going to, under settings endpoint type, change it to ALB or application load balancer. I'm going to leave the error threshold request threshold WAF block period um, as is. We will be changing the request threshold, but we'll look at that in a minute once we start uh, interacting with the server and desktop. So I'm going to hit next. And under stack creation options, I'm going to change it from rollback on failure to disabled just because it'll make it easier for me to unpick if anything goes wrong. And I'm going to hit next. So I'm going to review the uh, setup, parameters and everything look good. I'm going to scroll and keep scrolling down to the capability section and I'm going to acknowledge the AWS CloudFormation might create IAM resources with custom names. And I'm also going to acknowledge that AWS CloudFormation might require the following capability, capability auto expand. And I'm going to hit create stack. So as I say, that takes about five minutes. So whilst that's running, we can see that I have got Tableau Server and it's sitting behind an application load balancer at the minute. I've tested publishing to it and it's all working okay. I'm also able to connect to um, Tableau server using Tableau desktop. You can see that I'm connected here and everything is working fine. So I've, I've tested everything. This will be important because when, um, when WAF starts enforcing some of the rules, we'll see that uh, we might have some issues with publishing to Tableau Server and also connecting to data sources in Tableau Server via Tableau Desktop. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to run 
and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so we can see that the create is complete, um, that CloudFormation script produces a nested stack. So that's why we've got two, uh, two stacks here. I'm going to go into services at the top. I'm going to go down to security, identity and compliance. And I'm going to hit WAF and shields. Then I'm going to go to web ACLs on the left hand side here. And I'm going to change my region from US East to Europe London. We can see that this is my web ACL here that we just created. I'm going to select my web ACL and under associated AWS resources, I'm going to add an AWS resource. I'm going to hit application load balancer and I'm going to select my WAF Tableau which is the load balancer that my Tableau server sits behind and hit add. So now that I've got my web application firewall associated with the application load balancer that Tableau server sits behind, I'm going to go into Tableau desktop and I'm going to try publishing to the server. So I'm going to go into publish workbook And you'll see that I've already been blocked out. Um, I've been told I don't have permission to perform the requested operation. So that is going to be due to the HTTP uh, flood rate. If you remember, we left it at 100, which is quite low. So to show you what that looks like, if I come into my WAF uh, security automations, then you'll see that um, if I search for the blocked ones, that just now at 9.37, I got blocked due to the HTTP flood rate based rule. I also got blocked on the cross site scripting rule. So we're going to look at how we can change these. So first off, I'm going to change the HTTP rule because um, I need that to be lifted so that I can start not only uh, publishing, which will uh, be making API request to this portal, but I also want to try using published data sources as well, because I think we'll find that we have a different URI for that because it's a different um, API request. So let's go into rules and I'm going to select my HTTP flood based, uh, flood rate based rule, sorry. I'm going to hit edit and I'm just going to pop up the rate limit from 100 to 10,000 and save my rule. Now at this stage I can also set my rule priority. So having made changes to the HTTP flood rate based rule, if I wanted to then change its priority, all I'd have to do is select the rule and either move it up or down. But I like it how it is in the minute, so I'm just going to hit save. And now let's look at the cross-site scripting and switch over to server. So as you can see, not only have I been locked out from the desktop side, but I also am getting this 403 forbidden error when I try to access the Tableau server via the web uh, browser. So hopefully the lockout period should have uh, finished by now. So I'm just going to hit enter and then I'm going to log back in. Okay, so we can see that we didn't even manage to publish into post WAF um, in that attempt. So I'm going to come back into Tableau. Now that I've changed that rule, I'm going to publish the workbook. I'm also going to um, publish these as separate data sources just so that I can, um, I can test out the other part of the API calls via Tableau server and desktop.
So we can see that I have managed to publish the data sources, but I, um, I there's been an error whilst publishing the uh, the actual workbook itself. So let's just go into WAF and see what's going on. So if we come down to sample requests, and um, I think it's probably going to be the cross-site scripting, so I'm going to take a look at that. Yep, we can see that the publish check has been blocked. So now what we need to do is we need to modify this XSS rule. And if I also have a go at connecting to um, data, then we can see if I use this sales commission and drag a field on that I am now getting a new error, which is saying bad connection, Tableau could not connect to the data source. So if I now go back into WAF and in my overview, look at my XSS rule. I'm just going to refresh that so that we can see the latest results. So if I just filter to the automation cross-site scripting rule, we can see that our API calls from Tableau desktop to Tableau server using the Viz portal and data server are being blocked. So um, I'm going to need to modify the rules for that. So if I go back into rules, um, I could modify the pre-existing rule, um, except to uh, create nested rules, the easiest way to do that is using the JSON editor. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm just going to create a rule. So I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to go into add my own rules and rule groups. I am going to um, just call this um, Tableau Desktop serve API exceptions. It's going to be a regular rule and it's going to be if a request um, matches at least one of the statements and then I'm going to make it so that it's the URI, URI path. Match type is going to be um, starts with string and then I'm going to do viz portal for my first one and then I'm going to add another statement and I'm going to do um, the same thing again so your path match type starts with string and then match to string data server And then our action is going to be allow. So I'm going to add that rule. So um, this rule is now going to be applied with and logic with the existing XSS rule. I'm going to uh, move this up in priority as well. So I'm going to put it up above the HTTP flood rate based rule because I want my um, data server and um, this portal request to be allowed no matter what and I'm going to hit save. Okay so that's our rule all changed. If I now come back into desktop and if I go back into my data source now and just update you'll see that Tableau can now load the data and um, region is now visible so I can work with the data again and I'm no longer being blocked via the data server um, API request. Thank you for watching this video I hope you now feel confident about combining AWS WAF and Tableau server. If you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel and check out this video by Jack Parry, 
talking about building a cloud data lake from your SaaS platforms. Thank you.